yeah, this is package specialization on the 13th of April, right? So yeah, so the agenda, let me share my screen quickly. Uh, so what I was planning uh, to do is, I, or one is the library design. And so we, I use, I, on Monday we discussed a little bit the approaches. So there were I two things important for this week. Uh, I, actually that is, that is the third, I, so this is the third topic. Um, so one is the library design. Um, so maybe we'll talk about that a bit, then the IPv law, and we can maybe discuss still a little bit on the, I can give you the latest status on the function SDK uh, or the function runtime or whatever we call it. By the way, at the moment, my thought was to call it like this uh, condition SDK, uh, but yeah, that's my personal view because cap function SDK is already consumed by the cap team. <laughs> So they have a kept function as decayed. So if we rename name it the same, it's uh, it's clashing. But okay, that's a, that's a detail. But is that okay in terms of agenda? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, unless anybody else has something else. Yeah. Okay. So let's maybe go through. Maybe it's best to go through the PR uh, or I can also show it. Uh, so this is just one file, by the way. Uh, actually, wait, no, what was I doing? Uh, open in this, oh no, wait. So let me share it in my editor, it's probably easier. Uh, yeah, so Sagar, you had a question? Yeah, I was just saying at that time for the agenda, you know, do you want to also, if you have time, can we talk about the CRDs which you just pushed? Or you want to keep it separate? Uh, uh, we can also do that, but I think, yeah, so we can also discuss that. Uh, let's Based first do this. Time. Yeah, let's first do this. Then yeah. we do the IPAM VLAN and then we'll, we'll go to the CRDs. Yeah. Perfect. Now for the CRDs, we probably need other people, but maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is actually the the MD file that I uh, put in here uh, as a. I so what I try to do is document a little bit the why, the requirements we have, the design choices we took, and then uh, and then some information that might be interesting. So that's a bit how I uh structured it so basically i so the why is, is is saying okay we have a set of function and controller and they all have to access this krm resources and given i with the current choreography what you see is that the interface needs ip but then the ned needs to look at ip and then uh, there is other I, functions or controllers that need to access these resources now, one of the important uh, requirements, and I put it as first, is that when we manipulate this package, um, humans could have interfered or added uh, things. So like right now, I mean, Liam, uh, you, I, so you are creating this package right now. You could add comments to these KRM files because you are interested in, uh, you, you want to basically specify why this parameter is like that and so on and so forth. So as such, these packages, are operated upon by both humans as well as machines, right? And what is important is that the humans typically they can add comments to actually, or give some more context to what this parameter is used for. And it's important that during this specialization phase or this choreographical dance or whatever we call it, that we retain those, right? And as a result, the way that we are interacting with these, or how these libraries operate is important. So for example, initially we leveraged a Go struct because it's nice to, because it's type safe. Uh, but when you would marshal and unmarshal from a Go struct, you lose these comments. Okay. So, and then 
so that's one important factor that we have to design uh, with or a requirement that we uh, have to to adhere to and then secondly I, we have to I, so we have different set of of uh, let's say actions one is we start sometimes when we have nothing and we have to generate it so for that we opted for an approach to use a ghost struct and then from the ghost struct uh, get the yaml file so because when we generate it, we are a machine, right? And as such, those comments don't yet uh, apply, if you will, right? So that's why we opted for a ghost struct as in a way to uh, generate this, uh, this resource. And then uh, all the other operations are actually done through this kept function SDK uh, library. So when we do setters and getters on these objects, because we, for example, if we get an IP, we have to basically say this is the IP address that was allocated. So we have to convey that to other functions. And as a result, we have to update those KRMs. So we have to do CRUD operations on those, on those KRM resources in a way that we retain comments, right? So that's basically in a nutshell uh, what this is about. There is one more thing which is important is that also when we, let's say consume KRM resources through the Kubernetes API server, we are, uh, I, so the API server of Kubernetes does a bunch of validation. So if you set through QBuilder, you set a set of tags that this name cannot be longer than 64 characters. If you put in a value that is longer, it will fail, right? Of course, when we access these KRM resources directly from the functions, we lose that somehow. So we also need a set of validation rules that uh, help us or assist us in uh, yeah, complying to those uh, specifications. Yeah, Vish, you had a question so or comment? These rules are specified in the open API spec for that resource, right? Yes, so that's where they are spec and that's how the Kubernetes API server consumes them to do the validation, but here in the kept functions we don't have a kubernetes api server we have to do something ourselves no but... we have something called cube val function the cube yes, function yeah, can actually do that right we don't have to generate something new is what i'm the point yes. i was trying to say was cube val is there that's a function kept yes, function yeah. Yeah. that can do it so we're going yeah, to correct. leverage that as much as possible yes yeah, so that's one of the things that we have to do right and what is important is that we keep those uh constraints as close as possible to the API. We don't want to have validation rules in these libraries. We want to leverage what the API uh, spec yeah, says. Yeah, the open API and... spec that you, where you actually call out the patterns. Yeah, and, correct. Uh, the thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense then. Because yeah, if so, we have that in yeah. the open API spec, we can leverage the kubeval function that is already implemented. Yes, correct. And yeah. reduce the validation that we do in the libraries. Yes, correct, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Now, uh, one question that I had on the earlier point that you had about the comments, right? You mentioned yes, uh, yep. you mentioned that comments will not get lost when we use the kept function already out there, like sets and gets. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned about using the ghost tracks for any no. intermediate generation of the KRM resource. We are going to use a, a ghost track, correct? When we start from zero, we use the ghost track, right? Ghost track. To, yeah. Yes. So. We have to get uh, to set. We cannot use the ghost struct because yeah. then we we lose, we the lose this. For mm -hmm. get, we have two options. We can either use direct access, like we do with the setters, uh, directly on the resource, right? Or mm -hmm. we could compile it to a ghost struct and read it from there. So for getters, we have two choices. For setters, mm -hmm. we only have one choice. We cannot use the ghost struct. So which is the path that loses the comments? When we do the marshalling, uh, marshalling uh, into the ghost marshalling and, uh, and marshalling, yes, yeah, then we we have a problem. Okay, so have you? I mean, I know that uh, John had a comment to one of your PRs about having a uh, test as well for actually making sure that your uh, approach uh, ensures that comments are kept. Do have you already solved that problem, or is it still a problem that needs to be solved? No, it's solved. Yeah. I have solved? Uh, okay. a test in that. Okay. So yeah, so so what I try to do in this in this design is document a little bit the design philosophy or why we have made certain choices. So this is the first attempt to document this because uh, right now we all will know uh, in a year we will forget, right? 
and also is to bring new people on board the ideas to document a little bit uh, the choices that we make and stuff like that so this is kind of what we are trying I, why i try to capture this also based on what akash uh, was mentioning in the meeting on monday can we have a document describing this so that's why this was written and given that we now have uh, somehow an approach that we believe uh, we can live with that's why i started to document it such that from now onwards when we build these libraries um, we follow this uh, design principle my still my dream and probably for our one maybe it's a step too far but if someone really uh, would like to uh, have a special assignment i think there is a way that we can generate this also so, so basically rather than us right now writing code is that we can code gen it's a whole thing and this would be fantastic right so that means that we don't have to write code we just code gen it from the api spec and we are done uh, but okay that's a little bit i put it at the moment future <laughs> But if someone really has uh, a nice uh, ambition, <laughs> I would like this to be done somehow. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great idea. I mean, uh, 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 so we are doing, uh, we are uh, creating objects, we are doing the getter. So basically, uh, uh, based on the properties, right? You wanted to uh, yes, uh, you can. Okay, got you it. can read the API spec and basically mm. uh, because at the end of the day, if you uh, maybe let me show some code that uses this, right? So here is the code that we are uh, using. So in other words, you see here, this is a type from the API spec, right? So you could say I do a get method and a set method, right? So you yeah. see this field, right? So you can yeah. generate this, right? You see the type in the in the API spec, so you could generate the type from here, right? Got and it. then yeah. and and then all you see here, if you look get string value, attachment type. If you look to attachment type definition, it's just the path inside of the inside of the the spec, right? So it's, I mean, if you look at this, this must be called genable, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's a good idea. But so, and as a result, we would uh, have less code to maintain. Of course, we have to maintain the code gen tool, but uh, this would help a lot, right? So, but here you could yeah. see, all right, so this is actually this interface uh, library. This is now merged. Uh, this is the test, for example, Vish that does the comment uh, check. So here is YAML comment. So this is the test that does that. Oh, okay. Cool. Right. And and so it uses this input file. So you see, I have comments all over the place, and it validates yeah. after all the manipulation that we retain them. Uh, so that's what it does. Yeah. This is the one that got merged, right? I, I know we had some comments. Yes. But, uh, John ahead and went ahead and merged it. Yes, correct. So this is uh, it's still not final, final, right? So there's a few yeah. changes that still needs to happen. But for people to look at this, this is a kind of uh, a bit the principles that we are going. Uh, ISTE is I so ISTE is going to write. So what you see here is that these functions are becoming generic. So he's going to write. So in the parser, this is a generic library that we have. He's going to build a generic uh, implementation of this. And as such, we have less boilerplate code. So less uh, code copying and stuff like that. So we're even going to reduce the amount of copying from what you see here. But I think it's a good basis. Uh, I have asked the team that are implementing to I, basically now for all the libraries that we need, try to have an implementation by sprint. I, so by the end of sprint two. So that's the goal for us here. That's awesome. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. That that goes well with our objectives. Thank you. Yeah, that's the the plan, right? So that's kind of, I just wanted to share uh, where we are and uh, yeah, get people up to date on what's going on with that. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think I really like this approach for the reason that when you said it's uh, it gives a, a pattern for others to develop libraries and yeah. the uh, other thing like you said since there is an established pattern now then it's kind of automatable like, like yeah yeah thank you yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, still a few nits that we want to do to optimize it even further than it is right now, but we it's it's fairly okay-ish. Uh, yeah. 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 
All right, any questions on this? So in general, uh, I have a question about interfaces. I mean, I would take the same approach to like interfaces when you have a bunch of methods. But one other reason to have an interface in general, you know, the Go, Go interfaces, you can have multiple implementations of that yes. interface. Basically, you have a bunch of different structs out there with different fields that you want to. Yeah. Uh, at this point of time, I suspect that we don't, we'll not be actually having uh, other structs going off, having different fields, trying to implement this interface. Is that yeah. true? So, so this parser interface that you see here at the moment, it's not yet aligned, but that's, the, that's yeah. what ISTI is going to do, right? So this mm -hmm. interface is going to be used by this uh, interface. So in other words, he yeah, will use the generic, it. This, this is a generic interface. So these two will disappear. They will move to the parser, right? Okay. And then they will have a generic interface that everybody implements. These will retain specific because they are specific to the spec, but we have a generic interface that we will reuse okay. by all the functions. And then this will be a generics implementation such that the code is then reusable. So this will be the specific part. And then in here, you'll have the, the generic part. And then these, these two, are actually all of these, mm -hmm. they will become a generics implementation such that uh, we just say, this guy will use this type, but the other will, I, so we'll have, everyone has its own type, but the code behind this is the same for all of them, you see? Okay. Uh, if the code... I don't know whether you're familiar familiar with if you're familiar with generics of Go. Are you familiar with that? I mean, I'm familiar in general with generics in other languages. Maybe. Yeah. So what you see, if you look, if you look to this this function mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. you see that this interface is the only thing that is specific, right? Mm -hmm. So you could write a generics get Go struct, mm -hmm. which is of type any here. Right, and this is using any, and then you say, I will mm. uh, expose this function as a type any, as a generic implementation. When you yeah. instantiate it here, you say any is interface, is this uh, type. Earlier, I used to use interface. Go interface used to be like almost like a yeah, yeah any, this is a type, pet. right? So I haven't played with Go generic, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so you will see, uh, so ISTI is going to, to uh, do an implementation of that. So as a result, this code will even be reduced because we say it's an implementation of X and it uses this specific type. So all the code will disappear from this side. Okay, okay. So uh, my question was, uh, in general, maybe that can come in later. In general, if you want to be able to specify interface, the Go interface, you yes, want to define a bunch of methods, which is uh, equivalent to Java's, I forget. Java had this thing called interface, right? Also, correct. Yeah. means so, implements yeah. interface. That means yeah. you just define a bunch of methods and you go go and do implements interface, which means you expect like three or four uh, objects to go and implement that interface, right? Or structs. Yeah. Yes. In this particular case, I was thinking that we probably, for example, when you look at this get attachment type, CNI type, network instance name, even though we defended it inside of an interface, Go interface, there's probably no other object that is going to have a different implementation of these methods. For this one, not. That's correct. Yeah, so, that's but, what I was trying the to other, say. Yeah. But this is for grouping. It seems like it's a good way to group it in, in terms of the Go interface. Otherwise, this could just be stand standalone functions as well. Yeah. Yeah, so Go interface does two things in my view. One is doing this reusable building blocks. Eh? So, and these will be a generic interface, right? And then we will import them. But uh, the second thing that Go interface does is that it shields the internals of this uh, function from the outside, right? So that's the other thing that it does. So you, you don't have direct access to the internals of what is behind this implementation, right? So. So all the internals that we do now, in this case, it's only, I, we retain a cube object. And so basically the, so this is the only thing that we retain, but, mm. and okay, in this case we expose it, but uh, in a lot of cases you don't even expose it, which means that you hide the internals of your implementation from the outside world. And these are the only methods that you expose. Yeah. yeah. You see? So in this particular case, when you, when you showed that uh, function object there, the struct this out one? there. This one, yes. Yeah, right. When that, that type IT phase struct, that IT phase is one of the structs that is implementing that interface, basically. Correct. Yeah. This is the them. implementation. This is the implementation. Yeah. And of my that point interface. I was trying to say was you will not have something else just like how we have IT phase. 
you won't pro ITFCE, you probably don't will not have another implementation that says type STF STFSE. Yeah, that's correct. Not for these methods, yeah. but for yes. these, yes. yes, for these we will, yeah, and, but for these, and, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Just for the completion sake, uh, just want to add one of the big uses of interface is, I mean, the two, I mean, you mentioned, Bish, uh, and the other one is the big use is the mocking. If you're using yes. unit testing, and if you're yes, yes. using this yes. as a dependency yes. to some other module, Correct. And That's if you have, if you have implemented that as an interface, it is very easy to mock it. Correct. And Correct. then it's very easy to unit test. Correct. That yes, makes yeah. sense. I've used. There is the other. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to yeah. use. I'm using. I'm a big fan of interface personally. So, uh, but yeah, I'm using mm -hmm. it uh, as much. Yeah, as so in this particular same case, same. the value had <laughs> is uh, even though there's only one implementation of this interface, the value had is in mocking. Basically, that's the way take away from yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's good. In, yeah. in this particular case, encapsulation, right? He is encapsulating that object. He doesn't even give access to the underlying object. He's basically protecting the access to the object through the methods. Yeah. Yeah. So if I would not have exposed this, you will never see the internals of this object. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> OK, so I think this one is OK. So yeah, so this is the code. Eh? So basically what we did, maybe quickly to, to run through the code for those interested. So we have built a variable that exposes the path. So this is just, uh, it's like a JSON path, right? So you go step by step. So I try to make them here uh, generic as a variable uh, because it's a, it's a slice, right? Then we have the interface, which we discussed. Then we have the, the new. So we have two ways to get to this interface. One is from a YAML. So this is when we read the resource list and the resource exists. We use this to get the, the, the YAML file uh, in ISO uh, initialized and, and then shielded through this interface uh, definition, right? So, so that's new from YAML. New from Goalstruct, we typically we implemented because we also want to generate from scratch, as we said. So and because the Go struct is a type safe uh, implementation, we use uh, this method when we generate a resource uh, from, from scratch, basically. And as a result, so I, from the moment you instantiate either this or that, you uh, shield the same uh, methods. Right? So the same methods are exposed, right? And then these are the methods that are the specific implementation of that interface that you saw in the beginning. So that's how it works, basically. And yeah, that's it. Yeah. So it's rather simple, I think. And as such, I believe this is uh, called genable because it's a, it's a pattern, right? OK. Um, second topic. So uh, on, on this particular thing, some of this, I know yeah. uh, we discussed it, it got merged. Uh, some of this will, go, will be refactored, right? Like the set attachment yeah. type and all that stuff. Because what we are doing is we are not do looking for a validation before. It seems like we are processing those switch statements, even though that is null. And then we, re we look for that null in that uh, written statement. Yeah, I need to, this will be changed uh, from the moment we have this validation done, uh, Vish, as we discussed, oh, yeah. this will this will change a little bit. So that's why it's not 100% done yet, but correct, 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 it's correct. close, uh, it's close to it. So that is so that is two main things that we need to do is the validation needs to be updated, right? Uh, once we have the other PR merged and then uh, and then move this back to, to, to the beginning uh, as we discussed. And then ST is implementing a generic for this beginning, uh, such that we have more generic code. So these are the two main things that has to change. But uh, I, my view is that probably the generics, I'm, I'm not sure that we are able to merge this uh, in R1. The validation, I believe we can, we will do, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the should, validation will be there for-, for the Later too. <laughs> Yeah, so the validation will be done most likely. I'm, I'm expecting that for uh, our sprint tool will be done. The generics I'm expecting because of the, uh, the lead time of a PR, right? Uh, I'm assuming it takes at least a week or something like that. So, which means that if you don't have an implementation right now, it's going to be hard to get it uh, merged. But okay, we'll never know, right? So yeah, it's my personal, it's a perception. <laughs> to get a bit of reality into the mix. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, second topic, IPAM and VLAN, uh, right? Yeah. So, uh, okay, I am refactoring, I, so I actually have, so this is actually the code. At the moment, okay. there, is a, there is a branch. So what I have, I, so initially this repo, I, so it's still called Kubernetes IPAM, right? But you see here, what I've been doing is, I, so this is the original uh, API spec, but you see I'm refactoring the code to have, I, so there is a set of common libraries that are reusable for all the IPs and the VLAN. And there is a set of, so these are all the APIs and you see that I've implemented the VLANs, right? Um, and so there is a bunch of, let's say you see here, so there is, so, so based on the discussion of, of John yesterday, I, so maybe I, let me first uh, explain my high level plan, uh, Bala, or what I had in mind in terms of planning uh, of this. Sure. So sure. first, first of all, uh, the IPAM at the moment is uh, accessible uh, as it's not yet merged into Nephew, right? The code has already been changed aligned with the release one. So my plan is if we want to do testing, we can use that uh, for testing purposes. Okay. okay. Not yet okay. the VLAN, but the IPAM uh, is there, right? Okay. Because the VLAN is an optimized, it's actually a secondary interface. So if we can test already with IP, then we are good. My plan was for in sprint three, I'm planning to get this into the nephew repos. That was my plan. Okay. Now, based on the discussion that I had, I, that we had with John yesterday, I see that we have to, I, or personally, I would think there is two pieces to, I, so we have to, I have to split one part from this repo and then the other one retain, I, all the rest retains into that. Okay. So what do I split is the specializer controller. Okay. At the moment, this code is uh, here. So there is an injector, it's called. So I will refactor that to specialize it, right? But that is the reconciler controller that we always talk about, right? So that's this one, okay? This code, I believe John would like to put into the nephew nephew uh, repo and, and that's fine. But this one will depend on these resources that you see here. And I don't believe, I, or I don't think it's a good idea to split these resources from this main repo because you see that they are being used all over the place. Does it make sense? Are you still there, uh, Bala? Is Bala still? Uh, Bala dropped. Okay. I think hopefully we'll get to know better as we, at least maybe Bala knows more about this. Yeah. As we do code reviews, we'll probably understand some of these things better. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I so in other words, this I, the first thing will be so it's rather small, right? This is just a control reconciliation loop, right? So this code is small, so this will. But the other one, I think, I what we discussed is this will almost seem like a seed code uh, because it's huge, right? You see, so this is the VLAN DB backend. This is the IPAM backend. So there is a huge amount of code. Huh? Correct, correct. I mean, when we say seed code, is it an excuse to just push it in without review? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, but I, this will be a huge amount of, uh, this will be a huge task. Correct, I don't know. Correct. I mean, yeah, that's why I'm no, saying- No, no, Bala was saying that yesterday. I wanted to ask him. Oh, okay. The seed code is a process to actually get in code without any. But yes, I like your uh, idea about trying to like simplify. I mean, I like your approach of at least thinking about it to make it consumable. Thanks for at least making those statements because those are important uh, for folks to be aware that is huge and uh, that setting that expectation is a good thing. And also thinking about how to simplify that to be able to get a good review. Uh, yes. th thanks for making those statements, it's uh, appreciated. Otherwise, the, the, the point I was trying to uh, with some of these uh, code pushes is like, you know, we have an opportunity to review now. If we push sure. through this, we will never have that opportunity. You know, we have to make time over the weekend or something like that to get this kind of things reviewed, right? We'll fall, see, fall I, ahead. See, what, what I think is we push, but it can be pushed through a PR, uh, base, right? But I, yes. what is hard is to, 
to push it as individual building blocks because you see that it's very much uh, if you don't have one component then the rest will i so it's hard to consume Correct. it individually yeah so that's the the problem with it uh, yeah so this is one of the approaches we used to have at least in openstack we used to have you know you push your base pr and on top of the that pr and what what they would do is they will actually push another pr smaller pr on top of that you could have the entire thing done but you'll yes. probably have like six to eight PRs. But the instruction would be, hey, go look at this PR first before you come here. That way, it's it's built on it. You see? Yeah, sure, sure. And I'm I'm uh, looking for advice. I mean, I'm just sharing what that I'm is how uh, uh, yeah. we used to do but, it because some yeah. PRs, some features would actually take like ten to twelve PRs, but that would have been too used to consume. So it will come in like batches. Like, hey, these are ten PRs for this particular feature. So this is the first PR you need to review before you go to the next PR. So basically, if on your when you when you do a good Git push PR, the first one that you put will be the base PR. The second one will be on top of that PR. You'll make your changes on top sure. of that. That yeah. is how okay. it's done yeah. when you have a huge patch set like that. Because and I can do that. Eh? I, I can do that. Eh? So that's not a problem. Yeah. Uh, that's I, we just have to agree on the approach. Uh, I think that, that that's that is one approach I know has worked. That's what yeah. I'm, I'm just sharing that. Yeah. So okay. sorry, my internet connection <laughs> I got disconnected. Sorry. No worries. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I missed the last few minutes. Sorry. No, so yeah, so what we were explaining, I what was explaining before, I don't know whether you heard it, is that if you look to this code, I think I first of all, what John had in mind is that this injector, right? That's yeah. the one that is specific, that's the one that actually is part of the choreography, if you will, right? Uh, right. So that's that's the part. So I think he wants to put this in nephew, nephew, and you see this code is rather small, right? So I still need to write a few tests here. Uh, actually, someone is writing some tests, but this this can be fairly well isolated uh, from the whole thing, right? But it will be dependent on these API specs, and I don't believe it's a good idea to remove this and put it into pieces because you yeah. see that all this code belongs together. So my personal view is that I have no problem splitting this, from and put that in nephew nephew the other piece would belong still together in my view so yeah. that would go through a separate repo now i so as you see this is rather small i mean it's not uh, extremely small but it's it's rather small this guy whereas the other piece is big it's huge right yeah so i uh, we can uh i think there is two approach I, or I, that is two approaches that we see is either we treat it as seed code in which case fish is probably not be happy with that uh, uh, because you actually it's a huge amount of code right uh, what he was proposing is to i still push it but into individual pieces and then we review it uh, independently and but it's still one uh, big repo at the end of the day but it's pushed into batches but it will take uh, quite a bit of time in that case to to get through the chain right Yeah, I mean, th th yeah, that is one way. The, the, see, I mean, yeah, I mean, first of all, to start with your this thing, I, I think I'm, that's a that's a that's a good plan. Just to separate the injector, which is a dependency, I mean, which, which is which is which is part of the core nephew, right? Uh, yes. And then the IPAM backend is obviously that can be a different uh, different one. Uh, so, we. But here we are also talking about the VLAN controller too, right? Where, yes, what, yes. So, yeah, there will be there will be an injector for VLAN and an injector for IPAM. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. And so, my so, plan is to have that uh, ready. I so as part of Sprint Three to start, uh, I'm building upon this. Uh, yeah, it's getting that into the nephew uh, repos. That was my plan somehow. Oh, in Sprint Three, right? Okay. Yes. And then in sprint two, we can consume the currently host. So today this is this is open source, right? So this is part of uh, it's at the moment in Nokia, but the plan is to get this all into the nephew uh, environment. Okay, okay. I see what you mean. So and then for sprint two, just consume it from where it is. Yes, yeah, that's my proposal. Okay, yeah, I think that's that's a good proposal. It's it's uh radio the only thing is for the uh yeah i think basically whatever we did for the uh for the workshop we'll be doing for that 
to start the integration testing then to consume it from here uh, in sprint three. And then by in sprint three, we'll merge it, then uh, we will take it to locally. Yeah, that's the right okay. yeah, that's Thanks. my that's my plan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> so I think any, anybody has any questions, concern on that one, that particular aspect, how we want to consume this. What could be good that I do? I mean, if people are interested, uh, probably it would be good to use the Monday meetings more as a scrum uh, type of thing and the Thursday meeting more as a technology uh, update. Uh, so more uh, technical, I'm a bit more technical. Is that okay with uh, people if we took that approach? Um, so one of the things that I could do is explain how this thing works, right? So. Uh, so it's probably worth uh, explaining a little bit. I, of course, I will do the documentation, but it's probably worth explaining how this thing functions because uh, if you want to review this whole thing, uh, if you start from nothing, it's uh, it's going to be difficult. So I, I, one of the things that we could do is maybe not on the Monday next week, but on the Thursday next week, uh, but it's KubeCon. Yeah, it's uh, probably possible. So I'll, I can explain uh, how the system uh, is built, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's good. Yeah, and then uh, I assume next week you'll be out of pocket or most of the time. Wim, is that right? My plan is still to do the meetings. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I will be because. I think it's done. Yeah, okay. There is probably the party time uh, after, but it's just in between. I think so. It's okay. 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 <laughs> I don't want you to miss the party. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sure, sure, sure. We'll see what I end up doing. Yeah. But my plan is still to do the Monday and the Thursday meeting. So uh, I don't think uh, it okay. should change. Yeah. So, 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 the, so the, the our plan is to just uh, uh. Consume it the way it is. Obviously, in the starting sprint three would help us with that one. Uh, yeah. So, in terms of pushing this, uh, so uh, what is your what was your original plan then in terms of pushing the both uh, injector and uh, in the injector in the back end? Injector is pretty so, straightforward, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. So the my plan is to I start uh, it when after KubeCon. So that's my plan to get it. Uh, uh, no, no, no. What, what I mean to say is not when. How was your plan to push? You, since you said it's a big, big backend. <laughs> what was the? So I, yeah. I, I don't. I'm not uh, familiar. I think I like fish approach. Uh, Fish's approach to do it in phases. So start with I. So split it I, because there is I, what you see is there is pieces that fit together, right? So you, for example. See, there is the VLAN DB. So that's how the database or the cache, if you will, works at the backend, right? So this can be together. That is the IPAM backend. So they are different because IPAM is a hierarchical uh, tree, whereas uh, the VLAN is a flat tree, right? So, yeah. so, so that could be splitted. There is then the VLAN backend implementation and the IPAM backend implementation that uses those data structures, right? So you could split that. Yeah. You could have the allocation, so all the protos, right? So here, all the things that uh, the protos, how they are uh, like allocate what, so you can split that side. Uh, there is some proxies that I'm using for caching and refresh handling, so that could be split. So I, I can put it probably in, I or cut it down, in, and then there is the API side of things. So I would think, I'm not sure, I, probably eight, nine, maybe 10 uh, pieces. So what Fish was proposing is to put it into stages, right? So it's, uh, it's, uh, it will be one repo, but I'll, I'll push it into stages if that makes it easier for people to consume. So that's probably yeah. So Bala, I think while you are gone, I was suggesting how in OpenStack we used to have for one feature, we used to have 12 PRs, which were broken down into independent consumable things. Instead of getting everything, you know, in one huge PR, like what Vim seems like he already has an idea how to independently split them, a base PR. And then on top of that, he thinks what is the next logical thing that somebody can uh, review on top of that. On a single day, you could push all the 10 PRs, right? It's okay. But then you'll be saying, hey, look at this PR. This is the base PR. This is the second PR you want to review. This is the third PR you want to review. That will be like a independent PRs, which will help ease and understand what is being pushed. Got it. Okay. Seems like we already has a plan. Yeah. I have a view of how to do that. Yeah. I can, I think I have a way to do so. 
Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Wish. Uh, thanks, Rin. That makes sense. Uh, probably, yeah, let's stick, let's go with that plan then. Yeah, because what I think that is, is a good example for others to follow also, and also to show that, hey, we have been considerate. <laughs> uh, it will be, make it easy to uh, right, right. Uh, do it on the individual PRs, you know? True. And separation I, of concerns, basically separation of concerns, even though yeah. it all pulls together and come up with this solution. Cool. I think that makes sense. That's a good example to set as well, like you said. And then probably it's good. Uh, it's a good learning, easier to learning, easier to learn as well for, for us. Easier to review, yes, for folks yeah. to learn. Yep. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for thanks, uh, Wish for the suggestion and thanks for him for doing that. That will be really helpful. Yeah, uh, it's good for. Uh, thanks for the feedback uh, because it's. Uh, yeah, and I, we have to do with this together, right? So it's it's good to get a bit of a view from various people. So, yeah. Okay, but I'll go with the approach that this uh, Vish suggested. So uh, let's. Yeah. Yeah. Plan cool. for that. Yeah. Okay. okay then, I think silent uh, on the call. If yeah. they want to actually add their, uh, if if they agree or if they have seen something that I said or disagree, please feel free to. Yeah. Speak up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. The the reason mainly I was asking was for the dependency management for the release, right? I mean, uh, this is one big dependency. The other big dependency is the porch one. Uh, I think hopefully that will be, I think, according to me, I think all are landing in sprint three, I think, which is a good thing, which will still have one, one, one and a half sprint to uh, completely integrate and start testing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So then, uh, yeah, so I think, Sagar, you had a question, maybe quickly what I can show you very quick. Uh, if you want, where did I do it? My package example is gone. Yeah, I'm doing too many codes. <laughs> where is my package example? That's what I don't like about VS Code is that if you do too many open things. Um, here. So this is how function SDK, how it looks like right now. So it's very much the same as before. And you have a populate and a generate function. And you can either have both or one or the other. And that's how I know, this, the difference between upstream and downstream basically is. Uh, so there is two separate functions for it. That's how it's exposed right now as implementation. But the rest is kind of the same. So just to give you a sneak preview of what it is. I'm also trying to get this uh, tomorrow uh, through I, so I'll push this one tomorrow. Uh, so that because this will be a big one as well, right? So uh, for people to start consuming. <clears throat> All right. So that's a huge win. Thanks, thanks, man. This is this is gonna make a lot of our lives easier. Thanks, thanks for this one as well. Yeah, and then the implementation is still is very similar to what be, what it was before. So it's uh, the same, but. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, All right. Was, was Sagar mentioning some CRD stuff? Was it this one or was, was Sagar? Did, did no, no, no. So, so, so I, so this morning I, I was called into a meeting between a bunch of people, Steve and Al. So they had a, had a meeting and they called me and then they say, I will discuss the CRDs. Because I, what they checked in, I, so there was a PR for CRDs for I, so SMF deployment, UPF deployment, and AMF deployment, right? And um, at the moment, the 3.5GC code uses still the POC one, but when we did the CRD reviews, we agreed on a different uh, approach, which is easier to automate and stuff like that, right? So. We discussed this morning with the knee and with the guys and they say, okay, please. Uh, I, so I took the action to check in the code uh, related to the CRDs. Uh, and there is a PR, uh, which is this one, API. So there is a PR which is this, which will obsolete this one. So this one will disappear. Uh, so uh, Dimitri agreed with that, right? And then this one will take over, but he will do it for both AMF, SMF, and UPF. 
Okay. Okay. And Liam has already been reviewing it and stuff like that. But I think, uh, Sagar, you put yourself, okay, you had some questions? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was not reviewing. I was just commenting, actually. <laughs> I commented on that. So uh, because the, right now, it feels like the AMF and SMF, you just copied from UBF. Yes. Right? <laughs> See, uh, at, the moment, at the moment, we have nothing specific for AMF, SMF, and UPF in the specifications. So as such, they are using generic structs. So if there would be a change. So just to say what, what, uh, I, what uh, happened is the following. So at the moment we have a single deployment uh, spec, right? So all the types are in NF deployment and SMF just refer references the NF deployment spec uh, and the status and UPF does the same and AMF does the same. Of course, the content like in the interfaces that we put to SMF, the name will be uh, different, right? So it will be N3, N4, N6 for UPF, and it will be, what is it, N4 and, and N11 for SMF, right? So the, the names will be different, but the CR itself is designed to handle that because otherwise every time there is, a, the reason we did it, Sagar, was the following, is that every time there's a new interface in 3GP or whatever other thing comes along, we have to change our CRDs. That would be bad, right, in my view. So the, way, the reason why we ended up with this design is to have a reusable implementation. And of course, in AMF, you only have two interfaces or three interfaces or something like that. So, you, so the parameters that are going in there will differ. But um, yeah, and that's the, the difference. Yeah, so that's, that's the difference. That part is perfectly fine. I mean, we can have like an, something generic interface and then we can have a type based on logical 3GPP interface. That's perfectly fine because there can be a lot of them. But what I was more concerned about, like other parameters, for example, when you write things like, when there were things like um, maximum subscribers, maximum sessions and maximum throughput and things like that. So there are a lot yep. of things which are only specific for UPF, let's say, or SMF, but they don't need it. They need, don't have to be in AMF. Like throughput yep. information does not have to do anything with the control plane. So things like that. Yeah, so the, the, the idea there is that uh, you just don't set them, right? So you just, the parameters are there, but you don't have to consume them. So the idea is there to have a generic building block because, see, if we design specific and tomorrow you need another parameter, we have to change. So the idea was to make it generic, even though there are parameters that are, might not be applicable. You just, they are there, but you don't have to set them, right? If you don't set them, they will not be consumed. But then how, where are we going to mention parameters like PLMN and everything? So how will we configure the network function itself? So there are, so at the moment, what we try to do in, in NF deployment is to build a generic framework, right? Which is right, less 3GP specific. So if, right, so for example, DNN is in there, right? Because we need pools. But uh, what you see is that there is also a reference so if you look at this, there is a reference of configuration parameters. So what you see in our packages, for example, there will be PLMN ID, which is referred to this configuration uh, knob and the operator will use those specific parameters to augment the configuration of the NF deployment. And as such, we can have vendor extensions that don't change our CRDs. You okay. see? Yeah, okay. So that's the way to do this, is via these references, you can actually import other CRs that are uh, specific potentially to a vendor or uh, are parameters that we did not in Nephew define so far, right? So these, these are things to extend the, the CRs in a way that, that uh, come from specific parameters. Uh, so you could have a 3 GBP CRD that someone defined and uh, we just consume that. We just don't want to reinvent the wheel. You see? Yeah, okay. 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 I mean, it's too generic, you know? <laughs> it's very generic, yes. Yeah. And, and, and the reason, so the reason we did this or the, the reason of the approach was to avoid doing too much specifics because anything specific means you have to maintain and retain that. And if then there is a change, you have to update and stuff like that. So at the moment, we build a very generic framework, which, yeah. So the, the, the bad thing is it's not specific, right? So that means that you see things there, okay, but that's not applicable for me. So why should I deal with that? 
but it allows for more reusable code at the end of the day. And if we can deal with it, like, okay, this is not applicable for that parameter. Okay, then just uh, check that, right? Okay, okay, understood the approach, thanks. Yeah. But Sagar brings a very good point. I mean, somebody, yeah, I have not looked at it, to be honest with you, I had to go back and look at it again. I, I, I might have forgotten looking into this. So, 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 so general, general problem statement is when see, since we are a generic CNF orchestrator, I know right now we are understanding we are dealing with only subset of G core, but in yeah. general, I mean, obviously when we support other 5G functions, which we are talking about at this point of time, uh, and in general, other CNFs as well. So what do you think, Vim? I know we will, we'll have a lot of, you will have a problems in our hand to be specific with network functions. So how do you, yeah. what, what do you think we should do? What do you, what do you, what do you think? Uh, how do you solve this? Problem? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I don't believe I, my, my personal view, Bala is if as nephew being able to specify every single use case, we will never be able to do. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's my starting point on my base <laughs> where I start from. Right. Okay. Secondly, what you have to, uh, where we have to deal with is that specific vendors have specific parameters for their implementation, or they might have a specific way to expose them, right? So that's the second thing we have to deal with, right? And then there might be, yeah, them, yeah. So these are uh, two important uh, aspects. I think that we have to somehow accommodate for, and uh, because what I've seen in other, uh, let's say, attempts. They try to standardize every single parameter, right? So the problem is that we will be busy for more than three years and then it's evolving <laughs> to standardize every parameter that exists uh, for 5G, right? And every vendor will have a different uh, view on it. So we'll start discussing this forever in my view, right? So uh, at the moment, the that's also, for example, why when we came up with this package ID, right? is why did we went for packages? Because we can have something that is a rather generic object, which we believe is very relevant to many things. We define that and then we put that together somehow. But what we don't do is we don't build all this relationship in code, if you will, right? Or explicitly into a CR definition. So what we opted for is to say, hey, we have a set of parameters and we'll figure out how to consume them, right? So that has been a bit the approach so far uh, that we took. Now, the consequence of that is that uh, this gives flexibility, right? But you have to deal with it somehow. Of course, we opted for, let's use 3.5GC as a reference to prove this, right? That's actually what we are doing for R1. I actually, we did in the pod, but in R1, we are going a step further. But it also means that, for example, let's say Nokia or Ericsson as a, or uh, uh, Sagar comes into play and he says, okay, I want to have my network function part of it. That means that the specific parameters that we haven't specified, they could do on their own, right? So they could build a CRD that they feel relevant for their parts. They add that as part in the package, right? It will be consumed. I, they could even write a function during specialization that does something with it if they want, but they don't have to, right? Let's just say it just as a cut through from specialization straight to the workload cluster. When they build, when they write an operator on the workload cluster, they will consume this, right? And what they will consume is they will get a, a, a CRD from Nephew, which, is, which has these generic parameters, right? And then they augment it with a set of CRDs, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, right? Uh, CRDs or CRs specific for their implementation that augment the what Nephew defined and they build an operator that consumes that. That's a bit uh, the philosophy that we have right now to deal with that. Okay. And that's a little bit towards the meta model that uh, Tal is, is saying. So it's a step in that direction. It's not a full blown implementation yet, but it's a step towards that direction. You see? Uh, okay. okay. Is it true that at the moment the NF deployment is a, let's say it's a terminal CR? We, there is no part of Nephew that wants to interpret what's in it. So basically, we uh, start from 
interfaces and uh, IP allocation resources. And, and at the end, we create the NF deployment. And we expect that if you uh, put this um, CR custom resource into oh, a wow. Kubernetes cluster, then, uh, then it will deploy an actual UPF for AMF for SMM. Yeah, uh, correct. So right now, what I'm trying to say that right now, we do not have it to have uh, nephew defined fields at all. So basically, we at, at this moment, we can just say that if you are 3.5 GC or a network function provider, please provide the necessary network function, the NF deployment uh, kept function or KRM function that uh, creates your own custom resource uh, based out of interfaces and whatever as we have in the cap package. You know that is the last in the last kept KRM function in the pipeline. And then we and config sync will just deploy the whole thing. But I understand that later when we have we will have nephew standardized day two processes, then yes. we would want to interpret uh, parts of the deployment structure structures, but we don't know what do we want to know about them. So I, I would right. uh, delay defining the nephew common part of these kind of NF deployment CRs to that when we actually start to use it. Let's not try to feel, um, guess in advance what will be useful for those kind of processes. Okay. okay, maybe I'm not sure whether I 100% captured, but so uh, the way I, I think we should I phrase it is that NF deployment is kind of the skeleton that Nephew defined that comes down to the workload cluster and that a vendor would have to interpret somehow, right? What is in there for the most part is a set of infrastructure related dependencies that they have to agree with, with another party, right? So as a result, that's why interface IP addresses, VLANs, network attachment definitions and stuff like that are there because they are typically owned by infra people, not NF deploy people, right? So if I would to say, what is NF deployment? It's kind of the consumption of a set of uh, attributes like IP addresses, VLANs and stuff like that, that are, uh, let's say owned by an infra team that an NF needs before it can deploy, right? Now there is a set of, I, to get an NF deployed of a real, uh, yeah, NF like Nokia or Exxon, there is a whole set of other parameters that are needed that do not have these infra dependencies and that they can decide upon themselves. That would be given to the workload cluster through this mechanism. Hmm. Because they know that they belong together. One question, Wim. So, I mean, um, um, so we, we, I mean, the OAM is a different animal, I would think. Um, uh, but here, uh, this is what my question was in the specialization process. Um, yes. Are you talking about still kind of the control plane aspects like BGP and all um, that uh, might require more configuration? I mean, what is that? I mean, how would a vendor inject their specialization? What would be those use cases? Uh, for example, I, let's take uh, see, one example we already have, I think. So we are going to have one prototype in R1 that does that is the image that uh, we use to deploy that network function. So there is an image config CRD. Now you can argue whether it's generic or vendor specific, but it, we are going to implement it as a vendor specific thing. So there will be an image CRD that will be uh, obtained in the workload cluster through this reference. And so there will be an image CRD that is 3.5 GC specific. And that will be in the NF deployment be known through the deployment spec by us referencing this here. And then when the operator consumes NF deployment spec or the, the CR, I see I have a reference. Okay, so I need to do a lookup. I need to see is this resource, this resource belongs to me. Uh, uh, they are going to, Denise is going to put uh, watches on it if there is changes to it so that he can do lifecycle management operations and so on and so forth. So that's one example. 
BGP at the moment is in this specification, but we are not doing anything with it uh, in R1, uh, but it's there in this uh, spec, uh, in the NF deploy spec to uh, allow for BGP to be configured between the network function and the infrastructure. So it is there, but we are not acting upon it yet because also uh, the main reason is that free 5 gc does not implement BGP. So, uh, mm. so we, we cannot show it, but we could do it, uh, but we probably need to allocate an AS allocator. I similar to VLANs, we need to do something for AS numbers, right? Uh, but yeah, so BGP is in the spec at the moment, but we are probably not going to exercise it, but maybe in a phase later, we might uh, do that, yeah. I think we yeah, I mean, we don't do explicitly. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, we are over time and probably this is yeah, a, okay. a discussion we might probably have with the automation team as a whole. Uh, <laughs> because this is yeah, 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 yeah. there is one more meeting also that's going on, we mean to join, yeah. Yeah, correct, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, so, Ravi, final comments? I know you have hands raised. No, no, I mean, the, 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 this vendor specific aspects, we have never discussed it earlier. So I don't know what pipeline in, the, in our own, of course, it's not in the scope, but I think somewhere in the big picture, we can, this one, this point, I was never aware of, like there was a provision for vendor specific uh, specialization. Yeah, and that was like, yeah, yeah. M said that this requires a detailed discussion, probably. Yes. Can have yeah, that. It's, it, it requires a discussion with a wider team, but if you see it to the CRD spec, it has this, the name was just vendor reference. If you look to the CRD spec, it has, vendor reference in it uh, but i changed it to con I, some people asked me to change it to config but if you look at if you go and look at the vendor ref you see here it was there i don't i didn't change it it was there in the spec from in the crd talk i just copied it okay yeah i mean the use cases is what i was more interested but we never in. we never discussed how to consume it that's yeah. correct yeah, yeah 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 that's correct yeah cool and by the way what i'm just saying is is uh, maybe not the only way to use it just to but so yeah okay we'll meet in the other All right. meeting then. yes thanks. all right thanks, thanks really appreciate it yeah thank, thank you, you. thanks, thanks.